as you're looking for the verse, uh, I just simply believe that uh, God is not done yet with us. God has a reason for your life. He has a reason for our life as a fellowship. Uh, and I believe that he still is calling that uh, unto himself. There are still people who are ready to respond uh, in our communities in the spirit and in truth. How about that? To worship the living God. Sounds good? Yes. 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 But also I want to kind of personalize, personalize a little bit. It's not just that you feel good and thank God that you are here. But I believe it is the Lord who has called your life to follow him. How about that? It is always the Lord that we begin with. It is the Holy Spirit that just prompts your heart and gives you the desire to follow Jesus. So here is a peculiar situation. Let me read one more time that verse and then you will see what I want to talk about briefly. So Elijah went from there and he found Elisha, son of Shabbat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. We call this a a a uh, kind of like a like a well here we have one of those uh, these mantle in front of us this one is made in uh, Guatemala I think like this from time to time I'm using but there was a different one made there that uh, kind of for of the camels her it was more like a brown style and as he was walking by the field he saw Elisha and Elijah the great prophet Elijah threw his mantle on him I want you to stop and I don't want to talk about ministries today I don't want to talk about the miracles today but I just want to talk about that mantle that he threw on Elisha. We all know that Elisha who was following Elijah he did double of the miracles uh, much greater the ministry everything doubled <coughs> and sometimes even more than that than the great prophet Elijah. God was with him but they all started that very day and that very day there's something unique uh, that I want us to think about before we get to the mantle. What's going on? Here is a guy that is working on the field. Here is another day. Today is Sunday, but tomorrow is the beginning of the week again. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We go back to the office. We go and deal with our people in our communities. We want to apply our wisdom, the routine. You have people that you are in charge of. You have the responsibilities that God is giving into your life. And here is Elijah. Then Elisha, who is working. Elijah is the prophet, but now he's the guy who is going to become a prophet. Elisha, the second one, like that. But think for a moment, he's just a farmer. What is he doing? He's doing uh, his job. He has those uh, bulls or cows, as we would say, a lot of horses in those days, and he's working in the field. He's doing it. agriculture, here we are. He's working hard. He's paying attention. What the matter is bigger. He has 11 pairs, uh, and he himself is running the 12th one. And something happened. Normally we just forget, we say, wow, well, it's another day, where is God? Sometimes we say, wow, well, maybe I'm going to see God on Sunday morning. Or maybe on Wednesday night when we come for the Bible study. But we forget that God is always with us. That God is not bound by time. God is not bound by circumstances in our lives. You might be on a job, but God knows who you are. 
And my God says that he still calls unto himself. And again, this morning might be few. Others are experiencing challenges in their lives. But I want you to hear it, that God still calls unto himself. God still has people who do not bow before the enemy in this society. Somebody get excited. Amen. Amen. And as my brother was prophetically speaking to us, our eyes cannot see it yet. But God is working right now even in the midst of us. Amen. God is performing a miracles. Why? Because we are still here. We are still alive. We still were not cut off in a twinkling of the eye. It might happen next hour. It might happen tomorrow where we are still here. We are still here and God is still calling us unto himself when? During the normal daily routine as well. God does not change. My God is the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who are watching us on the line right now. God knows who you are, and God sees you right now, and He knows uh, your situation right at this very moment. Uh, and here is a man of God, sent by God. And that great prophet, Elijah, is walking by, and God is stirring up his heart, just like he's stirring up your heart, my heart. Uh, we want more of him in our lives. We want to see a harvest of God in my life and in our lives collectively as a fellowship. Hallelujah. Amen. When I preach, I always see hundreds in vision, my Lord. They're all waiting and getting excited about the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And here is the guy. And suddenly he hears something happen. Here is a man of God, and he runs up to him as he is working on a daily job. How? When? What? Working on a daily job. Hallelujah. God sees you at the desk. God knows your computer. God knows where you are going. God sees you when you are shopping, when you are cooking for your family. God knows where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. And something supernatural happens there. He comes close to him uh, and then he throws his cloak around him. Wow! Look at that. Let me put this around me too. So I can feel it. Like we see. And I know what I'm talking about. How about that? Feels good? Like that? So here it is. Now, we have a white one. But I was brown probably the brown material uh, a mantle and you know look at me this morning and say why even are we talking about mantle piece of material right now but this is something not like any other it's something you need here it's something because it was a mantle of elijah it was a mantle of this great prophet, a servant of God at that hour in that time. How about that? And what he has, what he has experienced with God in his daily walk, now he takes off and he pulls, the scripture says, he pulls, he throws this cloak around him, just like this one is. He throws around this fellow. And this fellow recognizes the presence of God. It's so good for you and for me to recognize, uh, regardless of the hour and the day, that God speaks today. Hallelujah. Amen. God will rearrange uh, and orchestrate things in your life, uh, and He will shake the foundations uh, to wake us up. And He is waking us up right now. And as he's walking, he's realizing God uh, is speaking into his life. Wow! And you know the rest of the story. He makes an altar right now. And he sacrifices one of those bulls. Uh, and then he turns it out uh, and follows uh, the man of God. Hallelujah. Wow! What an incredible thing. Uh, but I want you to stop for a moment here. Here's your ordinary day, ordinary life right now. And this Elisha 
before he is going to follow into the footsteps uh, as a prophet of the Lord. Uh, can you imagine that moment? You are on your job. You're working hard. You know what you are doing. Uh, but now suddenly, in the midst of your job, you feel the mantle of the man of God, the mantle of the prophet of God uh, around your neck. Wow. Wait a minute, what is that all about? How overwhelming it had to be. How inadequate you might feel. I'm thinking about my own relatives, my own family. And you probably have heard me many times through those years speaking. My grandfather was a good religious drunk man. But something supernaturally, supernaturally happened in his life. And God transformed his life. God made him sober and God called him into a full-time ministry. How about that? I used to say, out of the drum. I yelled like the word religious. Out of the religious drum, God has made an apostle into his country. How about that? Yeah, that. I remember my father, he was just early teens, uh, just before Germans took him back to Germany as the war started. And he became a slave. But something happened in one of those meetings right there in that simple house uh, when all the people gathered together on Sunday morning. God has called him into the ministry, just like that. He didn't understand much, had no idea what is this all about, uh, but God stirred up his heart uh, and he was able to say, yes, I will follow you. Yes, I'm ready to respond to the presence of God. Are you ready to respond to the presence of God? Are you ready to say this morning just the way we are? Oh God, I'm ready to serve you. I'm going to follow into the footsteps of my brother, of my sister right now. I'm going to follow Jesus with all my heart. Wow. I'm thinking about my uncle. Some of you remember him for a while. He was here on and on before he passed away. He had incredible testimony in his life. When he was in the school, God in the middle of the night, gave him a dream, and the scripture was open, and a thing there was in the scripture. I think there was even birds. I don't remember now. And God was saying, this is your ministry. God can call you in the middle of the night. Amen. God can open the scripture and point to it and say, this is your ministry now. You're going to serve me. Hallelujah. Thinking about my own life, started in a different progressive way. And when I was a kid, what, six, seven years old, I could feel the presence of God. Again, you heard so many times during week, not even Sunday morning, but during the week, the church was full. Everybody was raising hands and praising God. My gosh, it was just from the early 60s, 61, maybe, or something like that. Like that. And suddenly, out of nowhere, I hear a voice. So in spite of everything else that is going on in life, an official proclamation that there is no God. How about that? Can you, you know, we are getting into that level already in our society right now, slowly and slowly, like this. Oh, but my God is not bound by any degrees of the president or, or whoever is in charge. How about that? He is ready. My God is ready. And I knew as my life was progressing right now that God is alive. Amen. It has nothing to do with your relatives, nothing to do with your spouse. God is alive and he calls you unto himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember a little bit later on, probably 14 or 15, we had a camp at, and on that camp everybody was separated and I was just praying on the field. I still can remember. And sometimes I questioned that. I was asking God, especially when it comes to the, to the Holy Spirit and, and the gifts and all of that. 
And suddenly, in the midst of that, my head was down on my knees right now, as I was not even on my knees praying, but kind of sitting uh, and just putting my head down. I was lifted up. I saw myself in a vision, uh, and the head was pointing down. Look, you are right now looking at yourself, uh, and you speak to yourself right now. The Lord was showing me the power of the Holy Spirit like this when I was questioning some of those things in my own life like this. But remember, God doesn't change. He's still calling us, each and every one of us. And maybe this morning you are sitting here and saying, well, my call was not so dramatic. It was just every day, regular life. And what I'm hearing right now about this mantle right now, and when I'm hearing them personalizing that, I'm here and I want to respond to the Lord uh, and I feel so inadequate there. Uh, wow. If you think for a moment about the scripture, every one of those guys in the word of God, they all receive the mantle. They all receive the call of God. They all receive their vision uh, for their time. Uh, and they all prayed like that, all the way from Moses. Do you remember Moses? Moses couldn't even speak. Moses in the beginning was trying to do things by himself. But I said, wait a minute. My call doesn't change, but you have to learn to depend on me. He took him on a journey for 40 years. How about that? Dealing with the stinky sheep and everything like that. Can you imagine? Ordinary day. And suddenly the bush is burning. Hallelujah. It's an ordinary day. I'm working hard. I'm dealing with plowing, but plowing the field right now. And here is God. God sees you in the office. God knows who you are this morning. Come on. Amen. And suddenly God speaks to you. When you think about Jeremiah, when you think about Isaiah, who even said, I cannot, I'm not worthy, I cannot open my mouth. Wow. How about Peter? How much and how many times he blew it? And before that, how quickly he was. He was quick to give an answer. But when the right time came, uh, he foresaw inadequate. But God has called Peter unto himself calling you and me this morning unto himself uh, and you might say but I'm not worthy I said Mike I'm not worthy I'm just sitting here but I'm not worthy I'm hearing listening right now but I'm not worthy I'm just just a person right here I feel so inadequate that and I tell you there's a good reason for that why? Because when, can you imagine? Here is the great prophet Elijah, and he is giving me his mantle. His vision he is giving to me right now. He is bestowing his ministry upon me right now. And of course, this man recognizes, I would say farmer, he recognizes that God is dealing with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Always you have to start with that first. Got to recognize that God is dealing with you. God is speaking to you. Don't look at your age right now. Just remember that God loves you and God is giving you his mantle right now. What are we talking about? Wow. When you feel that I'm just too weak, I'm just too simple. I don't know much. This is mantle that it's to be for me. Are you hearing me? Suddenly we are trying to, we, we, we say, no way, no way. This mantle doesn't fit me. I'm just working with the cows right now. I cannot do this type of ministry. But stop here for a moment. That's what I did. I did a little bit of the study about the word mantle. And I said, wait a minute. That's exactly what it is when you get a mantle. What do we mean by that? That's the nature of the mantle. In Hebrew, the word mantle, that, 
The word is very interesting. It's adherent. A-D-E-R-E-T. Simple. Adherent. Like that. But you know what it means? And I look and I said, what does it really mean? It means large. The mantle is big. The mantle is gray. The mantle is wide. The mantle is powerful. The mantle is excellent. The mantle is noble. The call of God is real upon your life. It is mighty. It is glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. All of that. In that one word. So yes, just like that Elijah, that one, that simple farmer, he recognizes that that mountain is bigger and greater than the one that is given to. But God sees you and me, not the way we see and look at ourselves this morning. God sees you somewhere else. God sees you some other situation and on a different level right now. Come on. You say, but I'm weak. Again, I'm saying, well, wow, I just recognize. I'm just hearing what you are saying. Huh? What does it tell me this morning? That all of us, we can say, we are the children of the living God. All of us here receive a mantle. All of us here would never be here if it would not be for the call of God. Now there is different call of God. Somebody to the ministry, somebody to the teaching. Uh, but I'm just personalizing this morning. I want you to understand that God calls you, that God loves you, and God wants you to follow Him today in 22. How about that? The laws may change, the circumstances may change. Jobs in life might get much more difficult. But the calling is the same. Because the power of Jesus does not change. Jesus is alive today. Our Lord and Savior, He is well right now. He's never shaken. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and He knows us here in Lake. For somebody say, Amen. 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 And then you see, oh, my pastor, the word adherent. Wow. It speaks of greatness. It's to be. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can follow. The call of God. Is too big for me. How will I deal with that? And some of us are simply answering, it won't fit me. This mantle will not fit me. It's not for me. It just simply doesn't match of who I am. Are you hearing me? There's going to be a moment we're going to struggle with that. We're going to just kind of think, oh, oh, wow. There's no way that I can make it right now. And when I compare this mantle with who I am, I'm just a simple worker this morning. <coughs> but the God is calling there's an interesting scripture for some more rights to the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. I'm going to read a portion there. I'm going to read so you can hear what the Lord is reminding us about. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26, we read in Christ's name. Brothers and sisters, here we are. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Remember, God is calling you. Not many of you are wise by human standards. 
Not many were influential. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God, hallelujah. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. Ooh. Again, God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. Be encouraged. <clears throat> Be blessed right now. God chose the lowly things of this world and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So that no one may boast before him. Who is telling us something here? It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. It is his call. It is God who saw the worker on the field. It is God who sees the person in the office. It is God who sees you at home as you are praising and worshiping and as you are serving your own family. It is God. It is God. And he reminds us that he does this, he calls you. Because he has become a wisdom from God. He is our righteousness, holiness, redemption. We started this morning from the south. He opens the door of righteousness for us. Hallelujah. On your own, no way. Therefore, as it is written, that let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Elijah becomes a man, becomes a man of God. From that point on, there was nothing more about the cows. It was nothing more about the field. It was everything about God. God who called him into the ministry. When God calls you, it's all about God. My God is a holy God. My God is a jealous God. My God desires to be not the leftover, but first in your and my life. Every day of the week. It's not just on Sunday morning. But you say, Pastor, I'm struggling. When I compare myself with the magnitude of that call. It's not for me. And I'm stopping and I'm saying, yeah. The call of God is always greater. The call of God is always more powerful. The vision of God is greater than your mind can comprehend. More excellent, more noble, more glorious than anyone who can wear this mantle or the mantle that is given to that mantle is greater, that call is greater. And I'm asking right now that we can see this in your and my life. That we can say, yes, there are great things that God already has prepared for us, even this new year. Something that we cannot compare. When you just see yourself, you see inadequate. You say, I am not able. But God, but God, and God is the one that calls, and God is the one that is giving us his mantles right now. And you say, but pastor, it's too big, and I cannot fit into it. Wait a minute. Let me finish with something smaller than we pray. You know what? This mantle is given to us. God's call is given to us not to fit who we are. I need your attention for the next seconds. Remember, when he gives you his mantle, it's not to fit of who you are at this very moment as a farmer working on the field. Why, why, why? It's always meant to fit you where you gonna be. Amen. 
Are you still with me? Amen. What you're going to become in the Lord. God has a plan for your life. God has a divine destiny for all of us individually and collectively as a fellowship right now. Look at that. When you were a little child, we are watching our grandson right now. There it is. You as a parent, you always bought him or her clothes to your kids that never fit them. Come on, mother. You know what I'm talking about? They were always too big. You don't buy for now, for this very second, for this moment. When you buy those clothes, when you get that mantle, it's not to fit who you were. Not to fit my Levi at this stage in his life, because it will be for nothing. It will be for one day or two days. He's growing up. But when he buys the clothes for him, uh, he buys, especially my son, he buys the clothes for him uh, for who Levi will become. Are you getting? Yeah. You say, but I'm small. I know. That's why God is giving you the mantle that is bigger. The vision that is greater right now. He's reminding you that you are growing. That we are walking every day with Jesus. Every day it's closer. Every day like him. I want to breathe the air with his presence. And that's the work that we have for today. That's the mantle that God is giving. The call of God that God is giving. So often we start looking around. But he didn't look around. He didn't even pay attention to his job. He responded to the voice of God first. And as scripture says, if you read that story there, he started to follow prophet Elijah. So now we like shot, shot and shot. Shot, like shot, is following Elijah. Can you hear God? God speaks today, right now. Can you see that He's giving you a mantle that it's too big? Wow. Well, it wasn't given to you to fit who you were. It's given to you to fit who you are here to become. Can you imagine you are going around and you have the authority to lay hands and pray? Can you imagine you don't have to wait for the next service? You can trust God right now. Can you imagine? I'm working this week and I'm working with his mantle in my office. How about that? Now I have glasses and I see differently at the whole situation. Wow! I can teach! Just a few minutes ago I had no idea. Now he's putting me into a situation, sir, that I thought I would never be able to do. How about that? Now I can testify. I can witness for his glory, not on your own. But with the mantle that you received as you were growing right now, yeah? You're, now suddenly the jacket is a little bit better than it was when your daddy bought it for you. Are you still with me? Okay. Now we can ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He's giving you a strength to be his witness. Are we ready to pray? Are we ready to ask God to lead us this week? this year and when you feel that you are weak say oh god i remember i remember this is the mantle that you gave to me and i'm growing into that position i'm growing into that ministry 
I'm growing as I follow into the footsteps of my Lord Jesus. How about that? Do you want to be like Jesus? Do you want to make sure that, wow, well, yes, that's why he gives us this call so we can grow together and be more mature, be more like him in our lives. Let will bow our heads for a moment and just pray. I want you to reflect on your own life right now. And as you're thinking about your life and your relationship with Jesus, I want you to remember that God is calling you right now. And God is saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I know you're just a farmer. I know you're just working on the field. But you can be my witness. You can open your mouth. It is I who am giving you the strength. It is I who is going to lead your feet. It is I who is giving you my spirit. You'll be able to lay hands and people will be resurrected. Yes, the mantle is bigger. The clothes are too big for you. Yes, that's the reason. That's why we gather together. That's why you hear the word. You can get stronger in him tomorrow than they are. And Lord Jesus, as we pray together, we desire to be more like you. Father, that's what it's all about. I want to be more like Jesus in every aspect of my life. Thank you that I do not carry mantle on my own. Thank you that it is not my call but it is the call of God in my life. We pray in your precious name, in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ.